Howdy y'all, welcome back to the channel. Recently, we've dabbled into the absolutely immense history of Europe, focusing on the oldest photographs of the largest and most unique buildings which we could locate. Amongst the handful of videos that I've already made on the greater European area, one of the most popular, and indeed one of my favorites, was about the cross-continent Roman road, the Cursus Publicus, and the seemingly impossible map which was created depicting the extents of that road's boundaries. Another popular video, revealing in all the right ways, was about the first aerial photograph ever taken in the United States of America. This opened the floodgates for me to the rabbit hole of old world research in the United States. And I'm talking about, of course, Boston, Massachusetts, and the aerial photograph taken from a hot air balloon in the mid 1800s. Within this highly detailed image of Boston, we are led to believe that the hot air balloon tethered to a rope thousands of feet in the air was able to focus enough steady the camera enough in the uncontrollable atmosphere of old world Boston to take this immaculate photograph. Conditions must have been nearly perfect, but I digress. What's really at stake here, and the real meat and potatoes of the four course meal, is what is revealed within the image. We see massive buildings everywhere, construction of the highest order, masonry. We see factories. We see so many factories. The entire city is lined with these factory-like buildings, at the time, converted to homes, but once seemingly standing as the epicenter of some immense business or ritual beyond our comprehension. Many, if not all, of the homes in the Boston aerial photograph which we see seem to indicate that the entire city was repurposed. The buildings were once a complicated facet of an overwhelmingly complex design, now remodeled into homes for a growing population. But what came first? This is a question we often ask on my channel while discussing old world photographs and the buildings within these images. Boston, for all intents and purposes, has been occupied for hundreds, if not thousands of years, by innumerable groups of men who seemingly each meticulously introduced their own way of life and in return their own style of architecture into the great city that we see in the aerial photograph. From a technical standpoint, we see fully finished streets, fully brick and masonry built structures, street lights, Numerous castle-like buildings that appear to have their own personal bridges. But what we don't see is a common neighborhood or even a common home in the sense of a two or three story building to house one family. Literally, in the oldest aerial shot of Boston from the 1800s, we see zero homes of that nature. Every single building appears to have been repurposed. What is now in this photograph considered to be a quote, home next to many other homes was once actually part of what we would call a factory. I'll provide you with links to these older videos if you would like to check them out. But tying this together with today's topic for the video, we're going to be looking at old world France. More specifically, we'll be looking at Paris, the nation's capital, in all its immensity and glory. Now, of course, my plan here is, and stay tuned this week as I've been vigorously researching some topics, seemingly beginning with the Habsburgs takeover of much of Europe. But my plan for this video is to simply show you something which in my opinion is either too detailed to be accurate and therefore denotes a sort of purposeful misdirection at the time of its creation, or it is so detailed and is accurate, which would indicate that the city of Paris even by the early 1700s, was most likely the most advanced city on earth. The hub of arts and sciences, and in general, was most likely the most abundantly built architecturally city in the entire world. And I will leave a link down below to this map for you to open it and check it out and while you listen to this audio, it might help you to actually look at the map in detail yourself. Now, I will have a video accompanying this audio where I'm going to be going over basically the history of this map and what I see in the map. But it's just a screenshot of me really looking through the map. And I did this on my phone. So it's really not the most detailed video for you. I really think if you open the map yourself and look through it with me as you listen to this audio, we'll be able to pull out a lot of details together. But let's get right into it. Now, how can I make a claim so bold about the city of Paris, France? Well, if you know me, you know I choose my words very deliberately. 
I could only pose a claim like that with a little thing called evidence, and that brings me to the topic of today's video. Before diving into Old World France more thoroughly and weeding out the nonsense from the earth shaping, I believe the perfect place to start is with the highly detailed, made to scale, Turgot map of Paris, first published in 1739. First things first, before we look at the map and all of its detail, let's briefly discuss what makes this map so unique. 1. It's a map taken from the perspective of a photograph. This is what really killed it for me. Within the current narrative, we are told that while technical maps, blueprints so to speak, were becoming the commonplace, and while the sciences and art seem to be growing abundantly in Paris, we are told in the early 1700s, the French municipality chief of Paris decided to commission a massive map taken from a bird's eye perspective drawn at a slight angle rather than a technically drawn map which wouldn't have shown all of the details. This chief was Michael Etienne Turgot, and the map is referred to as the Turgot Map of Paris. To help you understand just how immense and detailed this map really is, let us look at a description. Instead of simply outlines or measurements of major locations and creating an approximation of their distances from each other, as many technical blueprints seem to do, the Turgot Map was literally drawn and engraved to be a photographic representation of the city from a slightly angled bird's eye view. The Turgot map is made to scale at a size of 1 to 400. Incredible, given the fact the map itself is at an angle, rendering the perspective different on many of the locations. Yet they are so accurately drawn that it's almost photographic in the sense the buildings are said to be exact to the point you could use the Turgot map to scale and to travel Paris. That is how accurate it was written to be. The map, astoundingly, reminds me of the maps that we see that were handed out at the world's fairs, the maps that were given to the guests, the maps that were seemingly pinpoint accurate, yet never being drawn as a blueprint or an overlay. This advanced perspective map drawing would seemingly only be possible with a photograph plus extensive calculations and yet we are told that one man drew this entire Turgot map to scale without the use of any advanced agents or devices and I find that simply fascinating. Now the second thing that stands out to me is the sheer immensity of the Turgot map. The map is 21 non-overlapping panels each measuring roughly 20 by 31 inches for a total assembled area of 98.5 by 127 inches. Turgot's map has been described as, quote, the first all comprising graphical inventory of the capital, down to the last orchard and tree, detailing every house and naming even the most modest cul-de-sac, end quote. That's right. We are told Turgot went from house to house, measuring backyards, counting trees, and counting bushes and included all of them in his map. This may seem like a mundane detail to many, but to me, this throwaway line seems to indicate just how advanced this Turgot map really was. For what reason, if any, would a map be made with such detail that you would need to count the trees in any given yard and you felt the need to accurately represent them on your map? To put it another way, if you were planning to construct a drawn map of your city, or your town that you're in right now, or even your neighborhood, do you realize how painstakingly long it would take to count every tree and bush, to number them, and then to include them on your map perfectly spaced and drawn to scale with no overlap, and to have the entire thing be published in a matter of three years? The photorealism here is intense, almost as if the Turgot map was actually some sort of old world photograph, an accident or lost technology, a piece of forgotten or pushed under the rug history from an era where we had the technology to create something like this. I'm not saying a map like this at the time would be impossible, especially in Paris in the early 1700s. But what I am saying is this map and the creator, the one man, Turgot, could actually have achieved this process much easier with the help of ancient technologies that may have not been mentioned in this narrative. 
Third, to add to the questioning of this narrative, we are told that while Turgot designed the map and conducted all of the Gloria's research down to the measurements, we are actually told he gave his initial drawing to a man named Louis Brutez. Now, Louis Brutez, interestingly, has nothing written about him at all. He does not even have a Wikipedia page. It seems the only mention of this man, Louis Brutez, in all of history is to say that he, somehow, drew the mysterious Turgot map based off the initial designs of Turgot. Similarly, we are told that a Claude Lewis, also without a long biography here, was the official engraver of the massive Turgot map. That's something we see repeatedly in questionable old world narratives, that is, throwaway characters seemingly created as placeholders within the narrative. Louis Brutez, Claude Lewis, are these just names given to the ghost in the machine? The ghost of the old world technology which bled over into the modernization of the world? Is this Turgot map really a photo accurate map to the point that we could argue maybe at one point it was developed from a photograph or image and not drawn? Possibly using an ancient technology like the camera obscura? But I digress. According to the mainstream narrative, the map was published for the first time in 1739, and the prints were bound in volumes offered to King Louis XV, members of the Academy, and the Municipality of Paris. Additional copies went on to serve as representations of France to foreigners and travelers from all across the world. The 21 original engraved brass plates are kept by the calcography at the Louvre, where they are still used for printing, employing similar techniques to those used in the 18th century. Or basically, another way to look at it is the technology and the map are so advanced that they still put those who view it in awe. And the process is still so remarkable that maps are created in the exact same way today. Now, call me questionable, but what other technology has lasted for nearly 300 years, literally not advancing, and still being the epitome of all and entertainment and wonder for those who view it. We have the Turgot map, which honestly, in my opinion, has a lot of details which I find to be questionable, yet it's a piece of history and it's absolutely epic. But to understand that it's still being used today, still being reprinted using the initial first plates, still considered the apex of Parisian map making, and still, nearly 300 years later, considered to be one of the finest achievements of French history? One must ask themselves, is there more to the narrative here than meets the eye? Fourth, we've already been scrolling through the Turgot map of Paris here for a few moments, but for the last part of the video, or the last thing I'd like to discuss with you, is to simply really put my money where my mouth is, that is, to show you all of the glorious details of this map up close and personal. There are a few downloads and images of the Turgot map available online, and I'll provide you with some of those links down below. The one we are looking at here right now in this video is the original map, pieced together which still shows the border for each of the individual map pieces. There are other versions of the Turgot map available online where the borders have been removed to create a seamless map image. However, I found many of those maps actually appeared to be blurry when compared to this original unedited piece. So I decided to use this one as we dive into this discussion a little bit more. The version we're looking at today is roughly 100 megabytes. So luckily we'll have a lot of high definition details here. There's also a subsequent image, one without the borders that I found that shows the Turgot map at a size of nearly 800 megabytes. However, converting that highly detailed version of the map into a YouTube video was nearly impossible. I believe the Turgot map in the 100 megabyte version as we're viewing right now is detailed and it will show you an adequate display of the endless details of Paris in high definition. Imagine, if you will, the sheer complexity of this map for those who were viewing it for the first time in 1739. But lastly, and I'll chime out after this, if we look at just one panel alone of the Turgot map, you begin to question what you are seeing. Every detail is there. Every tree, every road, 
every archway, every home. But what's more engaging, and truly appears to swallow our notion of the old world at the time, is the fact that every one of these 21 panels of the Paris Turgot map is complete with these highly detailed showcases of that particular neighborhood or location. And what I find most fascinating about that, and seemingly most peculiar, is just like in Old World Boston, everything appears to be completely finished. There is very little room for growth, except maybe on the outskirts of the city. The streets, each and every single one of them, already has buildings, but there are not neighborhoods. We see fully grown trees and elaborate gardens, and most interestingly, we see completed streets and roadways. Even when we look at the river and the water's edge, you can see there are constructions there with immense retaining walls and these numerous bridges. There are seemingly no stones left unturned in Paris. And what struck me more is, besides the buildings, which many, if not 90% of them, are built with these hollow center courtyards, but we also have all of the farmlands and all of the garden lands and the garden plots which are calculated and constructed and have these perfect right angles which clearly indicate that someone went in and actually developed them already. Usually, we'd imagine the undeveloped land or these plots of land, these garden lands, as unkept and unmeasured, but in the Turgot map of Paris, we can see there is not a single piece of land that is unmapped or unmeasured or unkept. The plots of land that are considered to be farms are already measured. They are cut by calculated road. They are laid out by a tree. They are fully designed. They are not naturally grown. The entire city of Paris, from riverbed to back garden, as shown in this Turgot map, is a well thought out design. And this becomes even more interesting when we consider this is well before the French Revolution. Honestly, this is probably one of the only and most likely the most detailed depiction of Paris before the French Revolution that still exists today. In the art we see from the Revolution, we see lots of open land, lots of demolished buildings, lots of construction. And yet, in the background of these images and in the details, we see what appears to be a much smaller Paris. So what happened from the time of the Turgot map through the French Revolution to bring all of these massive buildings and these reinforced walls to the ground. If by 1800, we're seeing Paris and in general France as going through this revolution and in art, we begin to see the open lands and the demolished abbeys and the muddy streets. Yet in the 1700s, we have a Turgot map, which is made to scale with photo accuracy and it details Paris as looking entirely different. That is my question to you for the remainder of this video. What happened to Paris? Do you believe from the details given here that the Turgot map was accurate? As we zoom in on this map, the other thing that is abundantly clear, and I don't need to sugarcoat this, is that every single street is basically complete. We see that the roads are paved for the most part, and Many of the buildings are not labeled. We are supposed to assume that these are the private homes. Now, I'm not looking to make an argument here, but when these buildings themselves are so clearly part of a larger superstructure that once occurred here, and when entire blocks in Paris are reinforced with the same walls, how can we believe that each building within these walls was built at a different time. More or less, we could be looking at an infrastructure that all arose around the same time period. So again, the question becomes, what happened to Paris? We see castles and bridges and archways and sidewalks and other amenities, which while they were all available at the time, to have them all in one place already completed appears to multiply the importance. What's more, and the real kicker for me here is, just like in Boston and nearly every other old world city, we have Paris also experiencing a massive boom, which would end up demolishing the old world city. 
erasing the ancient history and possibly erasing any evidence of the origins of the original structures contained within. In other ancient narratives, we have fires and floods and earthquakes, which we are told every time like clockwork are responsible for erasing the old world in those cities and paving the way for the new modern construction. What we have in Paris, however, is not just naturally occurring events, but the real demolition of the city occurs during the French Revolution. During this time, Paris is almost entirely reshaped. The buildings, those immense factory and castle-like structures which we see in the Turgot map, are seemingly raised to the ground to make way for the more recognizable and varying Paris which we see today. But what about ancient Paris? Is the Turgot map our best peek into the window of the ancient Parisian soul? Does ancient Paris at all remind you of ancient Boston as depicted in the aerial views in my previous videos? What about any other major city? Do you see the similarities here? And as we begin to scroll through the final details of the Turgot map, can you imagine one man alone making the measurements for this map so accurately that it is said to be created to scale? And furthermore, if the buildings on the Turgot map really did once line the streets as they appear, who made them, when were they made, and what were they called? Boundless details aside, one thing we don't have on the Turgot map is names for nearly half of all the massive buildings which are shown. Are they castles? Are they private homes? Are they residue from a past civilization? Are they actually factories? The sheer immensity of them aside, with all the details of the Turgot map, I find it odd how, of all things, the buildings mostly do not have names. The trees are there, and the bushes are there, and the streets and the sidewalks, etc. But not names for every one of these buildings. I think I'm going to wrap up the video with that detail, however. I'll leave a link to the full-size Turgot map down below, as well as links to some relevant information about it. I'll also leave a couple of links to my older videos if you want to check them out. One on the oldest aerial photograph taken in Boston, and the other one on the ancient cross-continent Roman road. So those links will be down below, and you should definitely check those out if these topics interest you. I also wanted to say sincerely, thank you guys for 35,000 subscribers. This channel continues to move forward and it's with your love and your support and all of the information that we share with each other that that is possible. So thank you. I'm in the process right now of making some travel arrangements and hopefully I can bring you some content from the tri-state area heading to different monuments and things like that here very soon. This map, the Turgot map, was something that I had previously never heard of before. So I thought it was definitely worth sharing with you. It's created, according to this narrative, by one man and drawn by another, but it really feels like something that was created by a lost empire or by a whole lot more people than what the narrative has to say. If this map is even remotely close to what Paris really looked like in the early 1700s, then we can only begin to fathom the process that made Paris and all of its construction possible. So I'd love to hear from you in the comment section down below, more specifically, if there's any single building within this Turgot map or part of the map in general that stood out to you or any buildings which you wanted to learn more about, those will be the topic of an upcoming video. So leave them in the comment section. Let me know what building and I will do all the research I can and see if I can find any images or any history that stands out. Again, I wanna thank you so much for being here. If you wanted to drop a little support my way, you can do so at this link right here. And overall, I just can't wait to discuss the history of Paris, the history of France, and the Turgot map with you more on the next video. So I look forward to seeing you there. Cheers.